Hello, class. So today for science, we are going to uh, continue our, our lesson on investigating the changing earth. Today, we're going to talk about all three, weathering, erosion, and deposition, because all three of them are a cycle that work together. First one happens, then the other, then the other, okay? Um, our target for today is I can describe and explain weathering, erosion, and deposition. All right, so let's begin. First, I'm going to get myself out of there. All right, now let's begin. So as we talked about at the beginning of this week, weathering, Earth's landforms change constantly. Water, ice, and temperature changes, wind, chemicals, and living things can all cause changes. Often these changes occur over a long period of time. Rocks in Earth's crust are slowly broken into smaller pieces in a process that's called weathering. And there's two types of weathering. There's chemical weathering, and there's physical weathering. During chemical weathering, chemicals cause rocks to change into different materials and break down. For example, rainwater mixes with carbon dioxide in the air to form a weak acid. When it rains, the acid combines with the rock material to form a new chemical. Gradually, meaning over time, the new chemical breaks down the rock. Then we have physical weathering. In physical weathering, rocks are broken into smaller pieces of the same kind of rock. Water is one cause of physical weathering. Flowing water can carry particles of rock, soil, and sand. The particles scrape against larger rocks. The rocks gradually become smaller and smaller. Over time, they become smaller and smaller. The force of waves pounding against rocks on a shore can also cause rocks to break down. Wind can carry small particles that can weather rocks. Just like the picture here, wind carries sand particles that little by little shaved off the sides of these rocks. That's why they look like mushroom tips, that the top is bigger than the bottom. Then you have ice. Ice can also cause physical weathering. Water can seep into cracks of rocks. And if the water, after it gets inside the rock, freezes, it forms ice. Ice in rocks takes up more space than water does. So when water freezes, it expands. The ice can make the cracks in the rock deeper. And then the rock may eventually split. Just like the videos we saw last week when they had that huge rock that was split down the middle. Water got into the middle of that rock little by little and pushed it open until it cracked. Then we have erosion. The process of carrying away weathered bits of rock is called erosion. Gravity, wind, water, and ice all move bits of weathered rock. Erosion has helped to form many interesting features of the Earth's surface, including mountain peaks, valleys, and coastlines. So we have this here would be a valley. Then you have coastlines. This is erosion here at its finest. While you see the dirt moving, that is erosion. Yep. And then another form of erosion is water carrying down the particles of rock down river. There are many different forces in nature that cause erosion. Depending on the type of force, erosion can happen quickly or it could take thousands of years. The three main of forces that cause erosion are water, wind, and ice. So the main three forces that cause erosion, you have water, you have wind, and then you have ice. Erosion carved this canyon along the Colorado River. The river moves more slowly along the inside of the curve than on the outside. The slow moving water drops some of its rocky particles and forms land along the inside curve. Gravity, wind, water, and ice can all move bits of weathered rock. The process of carrying away weathered bits of rock is called erosion. Moving water erodes or carries away materials from the land. As water moves faster, it can carry along heavier pieces of rock. Moving water can slowly carve grooves into the land as it carries away weathered material. 
over a very long time, these grooves may become deep canyons. Waves constantly change the shape of a shoreline. They pound against cracks in the rocks on the shore. Gradually, pieces of rock break off. The waves carry away the pieces. As part of the shoreline erode, new landforms, such as beaches, develop. In colder parts of Earth, moving ice erodes landforms. Glaciers are huge sheets of ice. Most glaciers move very slowly as gravity pulls them downhill. As glaciers move, they wear away bits of rock and soil and then carry these particles with them. Then we have deposition. The laying down of pieces of rock that have been weathered and eroded is called deposition. It is important to remember that when weathering happens, tiny pieces of the earth, they don't just disappear. They are moved through erosion and then deposited somewhere else through deposition. It could be very close, like only a few feet away, or it could be many miles away, such as if the tiny pieces were washed into a river. Now you have a, um, an example here of how weathering works. So first you have the weathering, okay? So weathering breaks down these large rocks into small little particles. Then wind, rain, and gravity are forces that will help move those small pieces downward, and that is called erosion, okay? Finally, after the particles are moving, they're eventually gonna stop. And wherever they stop, they get deposited there, and that is known as deposition. As parts of Earth's surface are broken down, other parts are built up. The forces that carry away bits of weathered rock during erosion drop, some, uh, drop them somewhere else. This laying down of pieces of rock is called deposition. As moving water slows, the larger pebbles in the water settle to the bottom first. Then smaller sand-sized particles will sink. Finally, the smallest bits of silt and clay will sink too. Rivers deposit large amounts of material where they flow into the ocean. The deposited material forms an area called a delta. So this here, guys, is an example of a delta, okay? This is where the deposited material, it'll form a, a lush area full of, you know, nutrient-rich rocks and sediments and particles. In deserts and near beaches, wind moves grains of sand into mounds called sand dunes. Winds may move a sand dune or change its size and shape. The size and shape of a sand dune also depend on the amount of sand and the number of plants in an area. When glaciers melt, they deposit the rock and soil they have carried downhill. Some of these deposits form hills that mark the edge of the former glacier. So this up here is an example of sand dunes. Notice how they're flying, you know, notice the shape. Depending on what's around will depend how high they are or how low they are. But then also, do you guys see the ripple pattern on the sand itself? That is also because of the wind. Okay, guys. So what I'd like you to do is watch the video that I have today that, that will talk about weathering, erosion, and deposition. And then I want you to take the quiz. But I also not only want you to take the quiz, but I also want you to get 100. Let's see if you can do that. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know all of you can get 100.